with the amazing experiences that camping offers come some very real responsibilities. Now look, I'm not gonna make this a preachy video and I'm not gonna lecture about what people are doing wrong. But what I do wanna talk about is the right way to do things, camping etiquette. Whether you're a new camper or you're a seasoned pro, it's on all of us to understand this message and to pass it on as much as we can. So grab a coldie and kick back and let's get into it. But before we do, do yourself a favor, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because we are constantly uploading new tips and techniques videos on camping, four wheel driving, camp cooking and auto electrical topics that you just won't wanna miss. Okay, done, let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with the simplest and most visible problem with camping first. When it comes to rubbish, if you can carry it into camp, then you can definitely carry it back out with you, period. There is no other way to look at it and there is no gray area here. Look, I know no one wants to fill up their car with dirty, smelly, leaky bin bags, but there are other options. It's strap onto a rear mounted spare tire. And I think they should be as essential a part of your camping kit as your swag is. Use heavy duty bin bags inside them to keep the dirty gear bag clean and make it easy to empty when you do get to a bin. And dead set, I can't believe I have to say this, but there has never been a campfire in the history of camping that's ever got hot enough to completely melt beer bottles or beer cans. Don't throw cans or bottles in the fire and just assume that they'll stop existing. That goes for baked bean tins, beer bottle lids, anything. They don't just burn into non-existence, so don't chuck them in the fire. No one likes rocking up to a campsite that has a campfire full of rubbish. And dead set, if you're the kind of grub that does this, then you don't deserve to go camping. So after the issue of rubbish at camp, one of the biggest problems that we face as campers is campfires that aren't properly extinguished when people leave camp. Everyone should be clearly, painfully aware of what happened in October 2020 on Fraser Island. A couple of campers lit a campfire, neglected to extinguish it properly, and it burned out more than 87,000 hectares of the island's bushland. Now, where these campers did light that fire was illegal, but putting that argument aside for a second, this is a worst case scenario of what happens when you don't put a campfire out properly. All it takes is for a gust of wind to pick up some embers, carry them to some dry grass and start a bushfire. It's just not worth it. Always take the time to properly extinguish a campfire when you leave camp. Ideally with water, if you're near a creek or if you're at the beach, or if not, by burying it deep into the soil. But a word of warning on that last point there, never bury a campfire if you're camping on the beach. The heat transfers up through the sand and can stay hot enough to burn skin for hours. Only a couple of years back, a young kid up on a Queensland beach suffered third degree burns to the soles of his feet when he inadvertently walked over a fire that had been buried in the sand. Just don't do it. So on that topic, campfires, let's talk about the right and the wrong ways to go about having a campfire when you're camping. Without a doubt, a campfire is one of the most enjoyable parts of going camping. But you should be aware that you can't just automatically collect firewood anywhere you are. In fact, in most national parks, collecting firewood off the ground is prohibited. That means if you do want a campfire in national parks where and when they are allowed, you're responsible for bringing your own firewood. And when it comes time to find a place to light a campfire, always use an established fire pit. Don't just go burning holes in new patches of grass. And in fact, many campsites these days don't allow open ground fires, but there is another option. Portable fire pits are an incredible bit of camping gear that everyone should have. They pack away so small and they're easy to transport. And then when you get to camp, they set up in seconds. And the bonus here is when you use a fire pit like this, the campfire is contained. And because it's raised up off the cold ground, you'll find that you go through less firewood. There's nothing like a roaring campfire when you're camping, but you've got to do it the right way. Okay, so now let's turn the discussion to the topic of noise and the impact it can have on a campsite. Look, we've all been there, enjoying ourselves, the drinks are flowing, the music's cranking, just having a good time. But you've got to remember that that's not everybody's idea of a good time. Flat out, if you're going camping with a big group of mates and the fridges are full and you're keen to just crank the music, go well out into the scrub, well away from anybody else. That way, you're just not gonna disturb anyone and you're gonna have a good time yourself. But if you're at an even moderately busy campground, especially one where there's families and kids, then 10 p.m. is absolutely the noise cutoff time. 
It means turning the music right down, keeping the laughter and the yarns to a dull roar, and just being aware that there are people whose idea of camping is relaxing and having a good night's sleep in their tent. And look, if you do rock up late to camp, it's on you one way or another. Either keep the campsite quiet if it is quiet, or don't camp on top of other people if they're having a good time and you want to go to bed. And if you've got a big free-flowing exhaust, when you get to camp, don't let it idle. Don't drive from one side of camp to the other all night, dragging firewood back to your campsite, because that sort of noise pollution is just as bad in a quiet campsite. Okay, so this next topic could be a little bit on the nose to some people, but we've got to talk about it. The right way to go to the dunny in the bush. To go to the toilet in the bush, you need three things. You need toilet paper, that's pretty obvious. You need a long-handled shovel, hopefully that's obvious to a lot of people. But then the third thing you need is a cigarette lighter or some matches, and that one there is not obvious to anywhere near enough people. So the long-handled shovel is because you need to dig a hole to do your business when you're out in the bush, and then to cover your tracks by filling the hole in when you're done. However, if you just bury your toilet paper in that hole, there's every chance some sort of wildlife will come along later, see that disturbed earth and dig everything up. When that happens, you end up with toilet paper strewn across a campsite, almost as bad as if you'd never dug a hole to begin with. The right way to do it is to use a cigarette lighter or the matches to burn your toilet paper off when you're done. Now, again, a word of warning here. You don't want to be the camper that burns down a state forest just because you went to the toilet. So you've got to be doubly, triply sure that when you've burnt your toilet paper off, that all the embers are extinguished. Use the shovel, completely cover everything when you're done. But you do need to make sure all the toilet paper is properly burnt off as well before you make doubly, triply sure that you stamp out all the embers and ashes with your shovel. It's all about leaving no trace. Now, of course, if that sounds like a lot of work, especially if you've got kids, then the easier, hygienic solution is a portable camping toilet. You add toilet chemicals to them to assist in breaking everything down and helping with odour control, and you just empty it into an RV dump point when you come across one. Plus, you get the added benefit of an actual toilet seat out bush instead of an old fallen tree. The other thing to be mindful of is don't ever dig a hole close to a water source like a river or a creek. You don't want to risk polluting a water source that other campers might use. Okay, so I get that for a lot of beginner campers, camping out in the bush by yourself can be a bit daunting. So I can kind of understand why this next phenomena happens, but it doesn't make it okay. So let me say this plainly and clearly. There is no need to camp on top of someone else if there's an entire campsite to spread out in. By all means, find your own piece of campsite and set up your camp and go and say good day and introduce yourself to your camping neighbours if that'll make you feel more comfortable. But there is no need to camp on top of someone. No one wants to hear someone else snoring through their swag at 2am in the morning. There's no need to feel as claustrophobic while you're camping as you do when you're at home in peak hour traffic. It's something that I do and it's something that I would love for everyone to start doing too. Make a point of leaving every single campsite better than the way that you found it. It's a selfless act, but it doesn't take much time and the effect is a better camping experience for the next person. Hopefully that becomes a bit of a flow on effect with the end result being better campsites for everyone. So there you go, the beginning basics of campsite etiquette. It's up to everyone to spread the word about what we've been talking about here because as more people get out and go camping, there's gonna be increased pressure put on every campsite. And the last thing we want is campsites being shut down because they're being overused or used in the wrong way. What do you reckon? Any points that I've missed? Drop them down in the comments below and remember, hit that subscribe button and make sure you check out all the rest of our videos.